this is Kirov speaking and in today's Little Dev Update we are talking once again about three topics and that would be uh, morphing and fixtures and the new flow. Then we have the solution to the 99 trim problem you have all been discussing in the forums and in the YouTube comments. And then we have the third and final topic, a short glimpse on the buyer demographics and a bit of a uh, first fleshed out version of it. Alright, let's get right into it. We are currently working on changing the platform and model flow a bit so that you can choose one car body which has several variants and then on this little tab here you will be able to make more than one different body variant version of your car, of your trim. So you could for instance have a trim which is a wagon version, a sedan version and whatever like cabriolet version or whatever you like. And as long as it's uh, part of the same base body that would be possible. In order to make this possible we will also be looking more into fixtures and how they can be changed around once you have selected this kind of body. So if you are currently selecting a body it basically resets everything you have done so far. So if I would click this one all the fixtures would disappear but as you were spying correctly there we have tried to attack this issue by making possible morphing even with fixtures on. And this is already working kind of nicely. Still um, produced some crashes here and there, but if you check this out, it's working. So no more, oh my god, I have forgotten to flare out the wheel arches and now I have to do design the whole design once again. On top of that, what is nice is that Caswell has been looking into making this a bit more multi-threaded. So not only is it allowing you more things, but also it should make fixture placement and morphing uh, quite a bit more responsive. And uh, also we are planning for adding a bit more usability, as in we want to have uh, functionalities like you hold shift, and you click drag a fixture to create a copy of it and also hotkeys for deleting and all kinds of other things. Uh, we hope this will be much more intuitive once that is done and yes I think that's all there is to say right now let's get into topic number two. The 99 trim problem that was an interesting one so many people have commented on I was kind of taken aback by this. Uh, I would have not thought such such an amount of people were interested in this. But, so, that's why I'm going to present to you my solution. You guys had, or few of you had, really nice uh, starts of a solution, like taking average desirability into account and so on and so forth. But um, none of the solutions I've seen in the comments were actually workable because there was always some exploit or cases that were not covered and so on. So let's get into it and let me show you what uh, the solution we are going for is like. Before we start discussing the uh, intricacies of the solution, I would like to present to you a, a very nice statistical tool you can use for modeling behaviors and generally distributions and statistics. And of course, that would be the Gaussian or the bell curve. This bell curve is really handy because it is easy to model and it gives you a nice smooth distribution of things. In this example we have a centroid of $35,000 on the buyer budget X axis and we have the probability of that buyer having that kind of budget on the Y axis. So uh, what does this one entail? Well, we have a centroid and a spread and the spread in this case is I think 7,000, the centroid was uh, 35,000. If we use this one and we take one minus the integral of this function up to a certain price point, here denoted by car price, then we get the affordability. Like a buyer which has $30,000 in, in cash will be able to afford all cars which cost either $30,000 or less. 
if the cars, uh, if the buyers are distributed by this function, then we can see how many buyers will there be at a certain car price. In this case, with the 35,000 uh, Centroid and 7,000 Sprit, you would get the values you see here. 75% or more than 75% could buy a car which costs um, 30,000, while only less than 25 could buy one which is at 40,000 price. This is not really a realistic distribution in, uh, in this specific case, but it serves as an example. I'm, for the solution, I'm using this kind of error function, it's called. That's the integral of a Gaussian up to a certain point. And that is a really nice tool to use. The solution to the 99 trim problem comes in six distinct steps. And we are going through those uh, quickly because then we can take a look at examples to show this is actually working. And the first step would be to sort all the brand's trims by desirability. That is done brand by brand. Then you take the highest desirability car and multiply that one with its affordability. If the highest desirability car has a desirability score of 100, then uh, multiplying it with an affordability of 75%, which means 0.75, that would give it a final score of 75. Then you look at the next highest desirable car, which also is more affordable. Then you add the difference product to the total sum. And that would mean that if you have a car which is less desirable than the first one you had, but has for example, in affordability of 85 instead of 75, you would multiply that car's desirability by 0.1, which is the difference in affordability. In that way, you get every buyer to look at the maximum desirability car he can afford. Then you calculate via adding all these together for each brand individually, you get the market share of that brand. Once you have that market share, you can filter down that market share into the different trims of each brand by just multiplying the desirability with the affordability. In the first example, we have two brands and they have five and two trims respectively. Brand 1 also has a sports car model with two trims, which is not really that interesting to the family car buyers, which are simulated right here, or we pretend they are simulated right here. While Brand 2 is catering entirely to those. So now we have a desirability score for each car, and we have an affordability score for each car. And if we now follow the um, algorithm in six points, we see that we take the highest value trim and multiply it with its affordability, which in this case 110 times 0.75 is 82.5. Then we go to the next highest desirability with a higher affordability, and that would be the 9580. Only 0.05 times 95 will be counted in this case because only 5% more people can buy the 95 trim as compared to the uh, 110 trim. And then we have the same thing going on for the third trim, uh, which is a desirability score of 85 and only 5% more could buy that. So then we add those together and we see the sports cars are actually producing zero score here because they are less desirable and less affordable. We add up all the values and get 91.5. Brand 2 is a bit different. They also have a 110 model, but it is more affordable than that of Brand 1. And they have a pretty good Trim 2 model as well. So we do the same thing, we build the product and then the difference product of those two and we see that the Trim 2 adds a whole 9 points extra because that's 10% more people being able to afford a 90 desirability car. We add those together and see that the outcome is 102.5. 
which means that if we p directly compare the two brands, brand number two will be more desirable for the buyers than uh, brand one. If we take out all other factors like brand image, brand reputation, model prestige, model reputation and so on. This is a plain, even playing field right now. So we have the market shares of 47.2% versus 52.8%. Then we go into the final step and there we multiply every car individually, the desirability times the affordability, which gives us a score for that car. Now that we know the market share, we can then take, like for instance, for Model 2 Trim 1, we have the score of 82.5 and we have total sum for all the cars within the brand, which are supposed to get 47.2%. We have a, a fraction which then gives it 16.5% of the market share. The second example is about the uh, CEO troll problem. And that would be one uh, car brand, in this case brand number one, who has cloned all his trims for a certain demographic to eke out more market share. Let's see how this works out with this algorithm. Um, so, you know that only if there is an actual price difference, you will be gaining market share. So, if he made the um, cars all cost the same thing, then only the first one would score. If you make one of them uh, less expensive, then of course that one would count more. And in that way, you then gain market share but only the one which you actually deserve. Brand number two, we have left the same way. And now let's see what happens. Only Trim 1 gets market share. In the third example, Mr. Troll has been fired and replaced by you. And you have been designing a proper lineup for this brand. And we see how this works out regarding market share. Brand number two still has its really awesome affordable cars, while you have been going for a super desirable, less affordable one, a middle-ish one, and a really affordable basic one, which actually is a bit worse than the competitions. Overall, your cars are kind of a bit worse than the competitions apart from the high-end model you have, uh, which has only an affordability of 55. Mm, still decent. So let's see how this pans out. Um, as you can see, brand number one now gets the highest market share, even though brand number two on average is a bit more affordable for the same amount of um, affordability or more desirable as in the 90 and 95 trim, as you can see there. This trickles down to the following numbers. Uh, many people go for the expensive one in your Model 2 Trim 1 if they can afford it. And that gives it a pretty decent market share. And overall, you see this range you have designed was really effective because now you're covering a larger market. They are all getting kind of the same market share even though the, the highest desirability one is a bit less affordable. And that really digs into the market as a whole. So a well-designed lineup with this algorithm will always give you the best results. And that's kind of the solution to the 99 trim problem. Uh, I hope you were able to follow and let's get into the final topic. Since the last time we spoke, uh, things have been fleshed out a bit more in the buyer demographic categories. Uh, last time you were seeing a grouping of 60 different categories and since then I've only had to add one and remove another. The one added is the off-road utility one and the one removed was some other utility category which was a bit too premium to make sense. And uh, now you also see, whoa, there's a lot of values here. Yes, this is a first uh, fleshing out of the affinities of these groups and their budgets. This is all extremely preliminary and I will link you the um, full picture where you can take a closer look in the comments below this video. So hope you enjoyed and I talk to you next time. Leave your comments below. Cheers.